Hi, I'm Nick Pregnance with DuramaxTuner.com. Today on Diesel Insights, we're going to look at a compressor efficiency graph, and we're going to talk about the sensors that your truck comes equipped with from the factory. And we're going to see how those things work together to maintain drivability, to drive performance, to keep the truck reliable and clean. Let's rock and roll. For every turbocharger on the market, one of these compressor efficiency graphs could be drawn or is already in existence. What is this thing? <laughs> well, it's a little daunting. It's got a lot of numbers on it, but let's go over the basics here. On the bottom, we have airflow. So that is how much air the engine is consuming, how much air goes through the turbocharger in pounds per minute. So that is the mass of the air that goes through the turbocharger. Left-hand side, pressure ratio. You can loosely correlate this to boost. So. As pressure ratio goes up, boost goes up. The more you compress air, things change dynamically. The more air you move, things change dynamically. This graph right here is the graph of those efficiencies. And on that graph are also some shaft speeds that are worth noting. All right, now let's look at the graph. A little daunting. I want to draw your attention to the center here, the center island. There's a 76 on that. What does 76 mean? Well, 76 is 76% 76 efficient. Whenever you compress air, you can't do it perfectly. So as you beat that air into submission with your compressor, you're going to add heat to it, you're going to add turbulence to it, you're going to add more heat than would ideally be added to the air. Even if you could perfectly compress air, you would still add heat to it. Ideal gas law. Anytime you add pressure, you add heat. This is how much extra heat you're going to add. So 70 76% is your, is your best, best case scenario. As you move more air, so as you go to the right or the left, move more or less air, you come off of that efficient island. And when you see these numbers start to drop, that means that to operate the turbocharger there, you're going to add more heat, and it's going to cost you more horsepower. Because in order to beat that air into submission, in order to operate the compressor at that level, it takes more drive pressure from the more drive energy from the turbine, and it's going to make that that air that's being compressed um, it's less ideal. So, as we go to the right, we're going to add more and more heat per unit of boost per unit of air mass that we're moving, and as we can continue to get all the way out to the end of this thing, as we really ramp up boost and we really ramp up airflow, you can see 60% efficient. So significantly less efficient than the ideal gas law. 16% less efficient than on our perfect island right here. So anytime you're operating the turbocharger in less than ideal circumstances, you're going to get less than ideal results. It's going to cost you extra horsepower. It's going to be harder on the truck. It's just something we want to avoid. Now that we've covered that, let's look at these intersecting lines that I've drawn in pink. 150,000 RPM. So these are shaft speed lines. So at these boost pressures, and these airflow numbers, these air mass numbers, the compressor is going to be reliably spinning at this shaft speed. And this, this can all be plotted, and it's all consistent, and it's uh, duplicatable, so it's laboratory-type stuff. So as you turn the compressor shaft slower, 95,000 RPM, 80,000 RPM, you can see the compressor is really happy operating between 80,000, we'll call it 70,000 RPM, and 95,000 RPM. As we operate past 95,000 RPM, we start to come off that efficiency island. So now that you know what these shaft speed numbers represent, let's talk about some common sensors that are on these diesel trucks that help the truck understand where it's at on this map. Which, by the way, this map lives in the ECU. The truck knows it exists. Think about that. Okay, so most trucks these days have mass airflow sensors. They're located in the intake track of the truck. They measure airflow coming past the air filter, and they can tell how much air goes into the engine, into the turbocharger. So mass airflow, relatively easy to measure. The sensors last a long time. They're not uh, terribly expensive. Pressure ratio. That's a good one. So that's MAP divided by barrow. So you need a MAP sensor and a barrow sensor. Manifold air pressure or discharge air pressure one of those two, and barometric pressure. So it's the ratio between those two things. If you know both of those, you can find the ratio. Turbo shaft speed. 
It's a little bit more expensive of a sensor. Uh, Cummins, the whole set turbocharger, is the only one that I know of from the factory in, these, in this range of vehicles that uses a shaft speed sensor. It's really neat to see, though. Uh, the nice thing about the shaft speed sensor is it's great for reliability because you, you know from the factory what the limit is of the turbocharger as far as shaft speed goes. And as soon as that shaft speed sensor sees the turbocharger is near that limit, it can cut fueling or can open the vane cage up a little bit and get rid of some of that drive pressure. So you can really run the turbocharger right close to the end of its threshold and keep the thing happy. Not a sensor you see a lot, but it does exist. How about efficiency? Can we measure efficiency? First look, you might say no. But if you know ambient air temperature and you know the pressure of the air coming out of the compressor and you know barometric pressure, you can find efficiency because you know how much extra heat is being introduced by understanding the temperature of the air coming out of the discharge. So compressor outlet temperature, a real good sensor for reliability. Once that compressor outlet temperature starts to get into the red, usually somewhere around 365 to 390 degrees, um, that you'll start to see some safeties come in on the truck and start to pull things back a little bit. So if you know, if you know uh, two or three of these variables, usually you can model the third or the fourth. Um, so kind of an interesting thing. So the truck, you know, depending on which model or which brand you run, you're going to have different versions of these sensors or a different sensor package. The goal of the truck really is to understand where on the map it's operating so that it can understand how close it is to the safety limit of the turbocharger. We talked about this a little bit earlier. If we keep the truck under its safe shaft speed, we can keep the turbocharger alive a lot longer. If you go past the safety threshold of the turbocharger, that is run it way out here, 160, 170,000 RPM plus, it's a good way to dramatically shorten the turbocharger's life. What about this line here? We haven't talked about this one. So this line here is called the surge line, and that line is drivability. If you move this much air at a pressure higher than this, higher than, call it a pressure ratio of three and 36 pounds of air per minute, you're going to cross this line. You don't want to cross that line. It's called the surge line. When you cross that line, the compressor goes into surge and you hear a flutter. <laughs> That flutter, not only is it terribly inefficient for the compressor, but it's also really hard on the bearings. When you have that flutter, you can significantly degrade the life of the turbocharger, and you also get really bad drivability. Well, well can I move this line over a little bit? Can I, you know, one of the questions from the producers was, well, can I just change this? Well, these graphs are all drawn up about the shape and the size and the blade count of the compressor. So yeah, you can change this. In fact, you hear extended tip technology or 11 blade compressor, that kind of stuff. And what that stuff does is widen the map. So we move the surge line over here and we dramatically increase the usable range of the turbocharger. I'm not going to say um, we'll call this extended tip technology or 11 blade. Um, there's there's an anti surge, there's a bunch of things that you can do with turbochargers to widen the surge line, keep them out of surge. Is it going to make the turbocharger a bunch more efficient over here? Probably not terribly, but it's at least going to keep the bearings happy if you do happen to drive the turbocharger over there. If you add uh, 10 millimeters to the inducer size, you move this whole map to the right and up. <laughs> if you take 10 millimeters away, you go this way. So, you know, anything you do to the compressor really changes the map dramatically. And it's important to know that, you know, n no turbocharger design is without compromise. Um, there's an efficient curve. There's certainly a way to get to maximize all the inputs to try and get the best you can out of this thing. But none are without compromise. There's no way I can draw a square around this thing and write 100 in here and tell my, you know, compressor computational program to figure out a compressor that makes this whole damn thing 100% efficient and build it for me. It just isn't going to happen. Let's talk about performance. 
Now performance is really high boost and high airflow. On this map, it's not a terribly efficient range, but we might change the compressor design to make a little bit more efficiency over here, or we might operate the truck right here at 390 horsepower. So that the compressor designer is going to choose a more favorable area as they design the compressor so that the efficiency island is moved towards that peak power number. Now, in an engine that's designed to operate from you know, 100 horsepower up to 400 horsepower, you have to make some compromises there. You're not always going to be able to run on a 76 island. But the more you can keep those high islands in the operating range of the engine, the better off you're going to be. But as you run in those high performance areas, the truck's going to always be on this threshold of what is safe. So especially as you have high, t high heat, high temperatures, maybe you're running at high altitude, the closer that the truck knows as far as uh, safety inputs, so what is shaft speed, what is compressor outlet temperature, can we model those things? So if we don't have a compressor outlet temperature uh, sensor, maybe we have a shaft speed monitor and we know boost and we know mass airflow. So I can reliably say that the compressor outlet temperature can be modeled to be really freaking hot, okay? And if I know that, I can say, okay, we want to avoid that temperature, but I can reliably run right up next to it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's, if the truck can model those things more clearly, it can get more out of the turbocharger. The turbocharger can be used more versatilely. Before we wrap this up, I just want to talk about clean. And clean is really about understanding airflow of the engine. So if we know where the truck is operating on this efficiency range and we can reliably model mass airflow because we know pressure ratio and we know shaft speed, then we can say, well, that's how much mass airflow we should have. And guess what? If the mass airflow sensor doesn't show that, we can set a diagnostic alarm that isn't necessarily designed to annoy you, but is designed to let you know, hey, you have a boost leak. Your truck is not performing the way it should, and you should fix it. You should maintain it. But if we know that airflow number, then we can keep the truck clean by matching the fuel rate to it, so keeping it within its stoichiometric limits. All that makes for a longer-lasting truck that's more reliable, it's more pleasant to drive, and something that can tell you immediately when it's having a problem, which is really nice instead of driving 20 or 30,000 miles and filling up your intake track with soot or sooting out the guy behind you or ruining your DPF. Clearly, there's a lot you can take away from a compressor efficiency graph. It really takes a lot of inputs from the truck and uses this model and, and lets us figure out where we are and why we're there and how to get the most out of things. I hope you enjoyed this segment of Diesel Insights. I'm Nick Pregnance with DuramaxTuner.com. We'll see you next time.